everyone hits a bump in the road. What do you do with it? Be inspired as we explore the ways people experience, navigate, and manage the ups and downs and twists and turns in this road trip called life. Welcome to another episode of Bump in the Road. The basic podcast is always free. We also have a premium subscription called Bump 2 that lets you listen in on extended behind-the-scenes conversations with our guests. Check it out at www.bumpintheroad.us. Can laughter heal? Pragito Dove says yes. Using expressive meditation and a synthesis of Eastern wisdom with the insights of the 20th century mystics, Pragito helps people delve into their psyche, open their chakras, and find lasting inner peace. Her classes and her books are inspiring. This podcast is for everyone seeking a path towards soulful happiness and their most authentic self. Pragito, welcome to Bump in the Road. If you would, tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in London in the UK, although I've been I've been living in the United States for ooh, almost 40 years, actually. Um, and I had a challenging childhood. I had a very abusive mother, uh, verbally and emotionally abusive. So it was hidden wounds, nothing visible. But it was quite crippling in a way. And my child, childlike response to dealing with it was to just shut down my heart and live from the neck up, live in my head. Um, because simply because I didn't want to be hurt anymore. And the result of that was I was, was full of anger and fear and pain. I was actually terrified of my mother. And I promised myself as soon as I was old enough, I would A, get away from that toxic family environment. B, I knew I had to heal myself. And it was when my son was born that the healing myself was really right in front of my face because I knew if I didn't heal, then I would transmit all this anger, all this fear, and this sadness and grief, I would transmit it all to him. And then we'd have another person on the planet all messed up. (laughs) So... uh, I was looking for options and I couldn't I couldn't do meditation because at that time I thought meditation was just sitting just sitting there in silence and I had too much emotional turmoil too much mental chatter going on and my body was full of stress I smoked about 30 cigarettes a day and I had a recurring back pain from all the tension and I just knew I had I had to do something. And I was looking around and I, I came across these expressive meditation techniques by an enlightened mystic called Osho, who at the time was in Pune in India. He passed out of the body in 1990, actually, but fortunately for me, he was he was still in the body over there in India when I found out about him, and I just knew. I had to go go there, and I took my, um, let's see, my son was 14 months old when I took him with me because when I was six months pregnant, I found out my husband was having an affair. So everything kind of really fell apart, and that was even more pain. So I, I knew even more that I just had to take this step and go to India and and see what what help I could get there. And it was life transforming. It was absolutely life transforming because Osho t- was teaching a range of expressive meditation techniques, which I'd never heard of before I got there. And actually I was invited to train in them. And I thought he was crazy. I thought, what does he want me? <laughs> I can't possibly teach meditation. But he could see something in me, obviously, I couldn't see in myself. And that is a gift I have now 
with my clients. I can see potential in them that they can't see in themselves. So I started um, doing these expressive techniques. Uh, for example, the laughter meditation, the crying meditation. There's a gibberish meditation, which is great for expressing anger, frustration, and rage. There's a shaking meditation, which helps you shake out all your tension. Um, a dynamic meditation, which is very powerful also for anger, frustration, and rage, and getting your energy unstuck. That is really the, the premise of all of these expressive techniques is to help you get your energy moving again because for people like myself who had repressed had repressed all my emotions so when you when you repress the anger the pain and the fear which are the more uncomfortable emotions but the problem is you're also suppressing your joy your laughter and your playfulness and your sense of fun and your creativity and so it, it doesn't really serve you to repress all those emotions. And also they get stuck in the body and create tension in the body, which over time can create disease and illness in the body. So these techniques help you to express out all of those unexpressed emotions. The laughter, of course, is the most popular and my favorite, but that's a very powerful technique to help you because we laugh, ha, 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 see where that's coming from. It helps to open up the throat chakra because my throat was just full of unexpressed emotions and words that I'd never been able to say. Um, and it helps to open up all of the chakras so that you eventually end up connected to your center two inches below your navel. So it's a very physical and visceral um, benefit, first of all, for the body, which means for your health and wellness, which is the number one reason you want to do meditation, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but then also, you know, when you laugh a lot, it, it opens up the heart more, so that, in, that improves all your relationships, and it helps the mind calm down because you can't be worried and laughing at the same time and the laughter will always win so it helps to erase worry and anxiety from the mind and it the laughter also connects you with your spirit or your soul because it's coming from that place for somebody who lives with a very busy mind how can you explain how revolutionary this is in terms of living your life well, I'm glad you use the word revolutionary <laughs> because it is revolutionary. And this is, you know, this is credit to Osho who what he saw was that for us modern folks, the traditional sitting in silence wasn't enough because our minds have become so full of gibberish, actually. I mean, <laughs> too much information, information overload. And, you know, if you think of a computer, when you've got too much stuff in your computer, you, you dump stuff off in the trash, yeah? Let's say you, you use a certain software like QuickBooks, then you've got the old version that you have to update it with the newer version and get rid of the old version, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to do the same with our minds. And we can do that with these expressive techniques because we can dump out the, the Now, the gibberish is a great example for the mind and, uh, as I called it, all the gibberish and <laughs> information overload in the mind. Um, so in the first stage of the gibberish, what we're doing is we are dumping out all this overload of, of um, chattering mind so that in the second stage – it's much easier to sit in silence because we've just got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. And the good news is you don't get rid of any good stuff. You just get rid of the stuff you don't need anymore because the body-mind has its own wisdom. 
and it will keep the, the wisdom and just get rid of the chatter. And what happens then in the mind, it creates a space for silence to be there. And so our mind becomes much more spacious and therefore relaxed. And therefore, when our, our cre creativity comes through, it's very easy to recognize it and express it outwardly, whether it's through writing or speaking or um, making pottery or however our creativity, creativity is expressed. That marriage of the physical aspect of it along with the more spiritual aspect of it is really interesting because um, I, I agree. I think we get we get these energies, these negative energies from self-talk, from prior programming just stuck in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And it is an almost physical release that we need. Yeah, it is a physical release because all this stuff, like we're on overload. Our minds are on overload. And if, you, if you've been a person like I was, repressing all your emotions, then the body is on overload. And, you know, if you, you could liken the body to a car, like with the um, shock absorbers on a car. Now, you reach a point where you have to go and get new shock absorbers for your car, right? And we can't go and get new body parts <laughs> like for our cars. <laughs> but what we can do is express out all that repressed emotion and all that repressed um, mental stress in the mind to create space. And then, you know, if more people did this, like I, it's very rare for me to get sick, very, very rare, because I've emptied out over the years all of that dense energy that was that I was stuffing down. So my body's now much more full of light, as is my mind. And so I don't get sick. I might get the odd cold or, you know, but I've never had a, any kind of major illness. Wow. Um, you know, that um, brings me to something I wanted to ask you about, and that is what is the role of hypnotherapy in some of this? Oh, great question. Well, hypnotherapy works with the subconscious, and the subconscious is 95% of us. See, the conscious mind, this part here, it's only 5% of us. It causes so much trouble, but it's actually only 5% of us. And, you know, you could look at it, say, from the neck down is the subconscious, which is the wisdom of the body, the wisdom of the heart, and the soul. Or the spirit. And fortunately for us, the body has its own wisdom and the heart has its own wisdom. And the more we can be in touch with the body and the heart and the soul, then we, we can listen to that wisdom and not let the mind interfere with its negative fear-based advice. <laughs> Which, which isn't. The mind thinks it knows everything and it doesn't. And so what hypnotherapy does, and this I just, I, I only do the hypnotherapy in private sessions with people. I don't do it in groups. I do the meditations in groups. But what the hypnotherapy can do, let's say, for example, a person has cancer. So what we can do in the hypnotherapy is talk to the cancer. Now, let's say it's a tumor. We can talk to the tumor and ask it why it's there. And I actually had a client who had a tumor. And when we talked to it, the, the tumor said, I am here because she doesn't want to have sex with her husband. So she created this cancerous tumor and she'd been given, I can't remember, it was three or six months to live, all to avoid sex with her husband. So when we went into it more, it turned out she was afraid of her husband and afraid of asking for a divorce. Wow. And so what we did was we worked on healing the fear so that she could ask for a divorce. She got her divorce and the tumor disappeared. 
because the point of it being there was resolved. That's fascinating. Have you seen um, Greg Braden's uh, video uh, in China where they dissolved the tumor? No, I mean, I am a fan of Be- Be- Greg Be- Braden. I haven't seen that particular video, but that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. No, it's an old one. Um, and they have, I think, three doctors around this woman who has these tumors in her abdomen. And together they bring their energy to bear. And all this is being recorded on ultrasound as it's happening. So Mm -hmm. you have a visual representation and the tumor disappears. Yes. And it goes to this notion of energy and the energy we create within ourselves, good and bad, and how important that is. Well, yeah, it's, it's of supreme importance because when we are in denial of our feelings, which is usually at the root of every dis-ease in the body, when we're in denial of our feelings and also in denial of our spirit or our soul and therefore negating divine help or energetic help, then we create all these illnesses. But the good news is we can heal them. You know, if we can create something, we can heal it. So... Um, this is what hypnotherapy can help you with individually is to heal any kind of illness or dis-ease in the body, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is because it's all about the energy. And basically, illness or disease is just energy blocks in the body. And I actually have done a the humming meditation, which is from the tr- Tibetan Buddhist tradition, which is another of the expressive techniques. And I did it with a group of cancer patients at, patients at UCSF Cancer Center. And they, they, they had all different types of cancer because it doesn't matter. When, with energy, doesn't care what type of cancer you've got or even what type of illness you've got. It just sees energy blocks in the body. And when we did this humming technique, Everybody said they felt better, and I could see energetically they all look different. They all look much brighter. And there's a, there was a New York oncologist that I met. This was a few years ago, um, Dr. Mitchell Gaynor, who used these humming – have you heard of him? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he used these humming meditations to help people heal from cancer, and – uh, when I met him, I said, is this, is this really true? And he said, are you kidding me? Absolutely, it's true, you know. So that's another way that people can help to heal themselves. Yes, the hypnotherapy, but also through learning these expressive meditation techniques because what they're helping you do is clear out all these repressed emotions, clear out the clutter from the mind, and... Um, then then these energy blocks disappear. I think you have to be dedicated to wanting to heal and wanting yes. to go within because it's like peeling back an onion. Yeah. It, it, it's, it just keeps going and it does not happen in, with a snap of a finger. It, it, it takes dedication and consistency. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you said that because that's supremely important. And I was dedicated to it because mostly inspired by my son. And I didn't want to be the kind of mother my mother was. I wanted to completely change that whole paradigm in my lineage, um, which I have done. (laughs) That's one thing I'm most proud of, so that my son didn't have to suffer the way I did. And uh, he's turned out pretty good, yes. What, what do you think are some of the common issues that people face, um, either in terms of healing or in terms of their interactions with the world? I mean, some of the things that come to my mind are like judgment versus acceptance. Mm. Um, I, I think that's certainly a big one. Um, what are some of the common things that you see? Yes. Well, judgment is definitely a big one in fear. Um. Fear has a paralyzing effect upon people. It, 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 it can render them that they can't even move, you know, or they can't speak. 
I know because I experienced it. Like I said, I was terrified of my mother and I couldn't speak. That's why I had little stuff stuck in my throat, you know. Um, and so the best solutions to fear are laughter and love. Laughter and love heal fear. Where does the love come from? Within ourselves. And again, this is a difficulty people face because most people are taught, as I was, that love is out there, mm -hmm. somewhere out there. And we're all told also that it's from your family. Well, not with my family, it wasn't. <laughs> so, so uh, and we're also told, like with women, you have to go out and find a husband who will love you. Um, and love is out there. I'm not saying it's not out there. But the primary source of love is within ourselves, within our own hearts. And that was what I had to learn. I think actually the root of healing is within all of us. We are yes. so conditioned by our society to be externally oriented. You yes. know, the newest bobble, what do you drive, where do you live, whatever the external thing is. And we totally overlook the fact that everything we need is inside of us. It just takes some, it takes some guts to explore it, frankly. It does. It does. And it takes guidance and it takes good technique. So I was fortunate by finding Osho in that I had the guidance and I also have found these techniques that I could do myself because I couldn't spend my whole life in India, you know. <laughs> um, and then also when I when I learned the when I did the hypnotherapy training, which I did in Northern California, I, I realized I could help my healing by hiring other hypnotherapists to help me. And then, of course, I can help people that way too. So I think it's helpful because other, it's helpful to have somebody, a teacher or a guide or somebody who has good techniques to help you because otherwise it can get very overwhelming and disheartening. Well, and it can take forever. I mean, if you can expedite this process, you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And these techniques do expedite it. Yep. Because the expressive techniques, they just cut through all the density, you know, and open you up. And then you just you just can feel all this stuff just falling off you. And and the hypnotherapy, of course, can get to the um the patterns in the subconscious. And these are unconscious patterns. We're not hurting ourselves on purpose or getting in our own way on purpose. Nobody's doing it on purpose. It's all unconscious patterns that dictate what we do. And so here's where the meditation comes in because the more awareness you bring to your habits, to your patterns, and always with compassion for yourself and non-judgment of yourself, those are paramount. These patterns are deeply rooted. They come from our families and they come from society. I mean, society has a somewhat linear perspective, I think, on things where you do this, 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 this in this order and you're rewarded with this, you know, the house, the car, whatever. Um, I And I don't, I don't think that's in tune with actually our soulful meanderings that really bring us closer to our authentic self. It, it's not in tune at all. See, it's all the mind. I mean, the, our societies are ruled by the mind, which I said is only 5% of us, so it's very narrow. And this is why so many people feel like they're failing or have difficulty because they're, they're trying to keep up with unrealistic standards and unrealistic outcomes because everybody's different. Everybody has different creativity, different skills, different passions. Everybody's good at something or at least one thing. And the more you explore that and trust yourself, and that comes really from our spirit, from our soul, something we bring in this lifetime, then, then the more joy you have and the more joy, then you start activating the positive law of attraction, which, which it attracts more joyful things to you. So that's another dimension of all this work is to understand how the law of attraction works so that you can attract good things 
instead of keep attracting difficulties as I used to do <laughs> until I realized what I was doing <laughs> and changed everything. <laughs> but you have to take responsibility. You have to take responsibility for your issues. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found something in today's podcast that inspires you along your own life's path, because sometimes a bump in the road is actually a portal into a more conscious and meaningful life. You can subscribe to our free podcast at www.bumpintheroad.us or become a premium member to hear the full conversation. Just go to www.bumpintheroad.us for more information and to sign up.